Hi, Otto here for Bavarian Autosport. In today's video, we're going to be showing you how to replace the water pump in a typical BMW six-cylinder engine with a mechanical water pump. This will apply to the four-valve six-cylinder engines from the early 90s up through the mid-2000s, the M50, M52, M52TU, M54, M56, and the M-engined S50 and S52 versions. Now let's take a look at some of the parts and the tools we'll be using for this job. Okay, here you see an example of the various water pumps and thermostats for this M54 engine that we're going to be showing you today. The M54 six-cylinder is very similar to the early M50s and M52s. The water pumps are all the same. There will be some differences in thermostats. We'll show you that in a minute. Now on the water pumps, we have options with the BMW factory pump with the resin impeller. Now these resin impellers are far better than the original resin impellers that we found on the early M50 and M52 engines that were exploding and coming apart. We don't see that with these anymore. We have the Myla pump with the cast iron impeller, which is certainly never going to come apart. We have the Solari pump, which is basically the same as the original equipment BMW pump with the resin impeller. And we have the high performance lifetime warranty Stewart water pump. You can see that this pump is designed quite a bit differently for better flow and lifetime performance. We also have the original equipment BMW thermostat, the Bear thermostat, which is actually the exact same piece, and the Waller thermostats. Additionally, we have the upgrade metal water pump pulley. The original is plastic and has a tendency to crack and the BMW coolant, and of course, the Bentley repair manual for the specific model that we're working on to give us details, torque values, fill quantities, and anything else that might be unique to the model we're working on. Now, as noted, we will be doing this job on the M54 six-cylinder engine, which uses this one-piece plastic housing, electrically controlled thermostat. However, the water pump replacement itself is the same for the earlier M50, M52, S50, and S52 engines, with the difference on the thermostat being that these engines use a common separate thermostat and the thermostat housings. The original housing is plastic, which tends to crack. We have the upgrade aluminum housing. And the main difference in replacement, you can see the bolt holes are all in the same place, and the design is the same, but the installation is slightly different. We have a separate gasket here and a separate O-ring for the thermostat. When we're assembling this, the thermostat goes in the housing in the timing cover first, then the O-ring and this gasket and cover. That's our only difference that we'll see in doing the thermostat. Okay, now here you see the various tools we'll be using on this job. We have, of course, our coolant drain pan, the Forma funnel, our spill-free funnel for refilling, the garage guard floor absorbent mats, and our pig mat absorbent towels and mats here. Here also are the fan clutch removal tools, which this particular engine on this car does not have an engine-driven fan, so we don't have a fan and fan clutch to remove. We won't use these on this job, but if your car does have an engine-driven fan, you will use these tools to remove the fan and fan clutch to access the water pump. Now, all of these are available in our online store at bathauto.com. Let's get to work. Before we remove the water pump, we'll drain the coolant from the engine block. This will prevent a large spill when the coolant hoses and pump are removed. Be sure that the engine is cooled sufficiently to prevent burns from hot coolant and to allow the expansion tank cap to be removed before starting any work. To access the block drain, we'll remove the undercar splash shield if required. This shield is secured using quarter turn Phillips head fasteners as well as a few of the typical BMW plastic push rivets. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to release the quarter turn fasteners. 
we like to use diagonal cutters to pull the center pins out of the plastic rivets. Gently grasp the pin under the head and pry it out of the rivet base. Be careful not to cut the pin. We can now pry out the rivet bases. Lower and remove the splash shield. The engine block drain plug will be on the passenger side on six cylinder engines. M54 engines have the plug above the engine mounting arm. Earlier M50 and 52 engines have the plug between cylinders 4 and 5. Use a combination of sockets, extensions, and ratchet or wrenches to access and loosen the plug. This plug has a 13 mm hex head. Once the plug is loose and nearly removed, use the Forma funnel to direct the coolant into the drain pan. Slowly loosen the plug to help control the coolant release. Allow the coolant to fully drain into the pan. After draining, remove the Forma funnel and replace the drain plug. To access the fan and water pump, we'll remove the upper intake air scoop. Remove the plastic push rivets using the diagonal cutters. Pull the scoop from the elbow. Before removing the fan, we'll remove the intake elbow. Use a screwdriver to release the securing tabs, then pull the elbow from the filter box. This manual transmission 325i uses an electric engine fan instead of the mechanical engine driven fan that's used on various other BMW models. If your model has a mechanical fan that is attached to the water pump pulley, click on the annotation in the video to go to our video showing the removal of the fan and clutch assembly. The electric fan is secured by one plastic push rivet and one Torx head screw. Release and remove the plastic rivet using the diagonal cutters. Remove the screw using a T25 Torx bit. Release the harness plug from the automatic air quality sensor. Press the release tab to pull the harness plug from the sensor. Use a screwdriver to pry the plug off if it's stuck. Release the fan harness plug by pinching the two release tabs and pulling the harness plug upward. We can now lift the fan assembly up and out of the vehicle. While the water pump can be replaced without removing the thermostat, there is much better access with the thermostat removed. And we do recommend replacing the thermostat while the system is drained and opened as just a regular preventative maintenance task. The later models use these quick disconnect hose ends instead of the older screw type hose clamps. Use a small screwdriver to release and pull the clamping wire.
The hose end can now be pulled from the thermostat nipple. Release and remove the lower hose. We can now work on removing the thermostat. Loosen the 11 millimeter hex nut. Loosen and remove the 13 millimeter hex head bolt at the bottom of the bracket. To fully remove the bracket, the Vanos oil line must be disconnected. Loosen and remove the banjo fitting bolt using a 19 millimeter box end wrench. Some of the oil may drain when the fitting is loosened and removed. Use a rag or towel to catch any drainage or drips. Remove the banjo bolt and be sure to keep track of the two sealing washers, one on each side of the banjo fitting. Remove the 11 millimeter nut if not done previously. Remove the lifting eye bracket. Unplug and remove the thermostat harness plug. Remove the three remaining 10 millimeter hex head thermostat securing bolts. Pull the thermostat assembly from the timing cover. We'll now prepare to remove the water pump pulley. Loosen, but do not remove, the four 10 millimeter hex head bolts that secure the pulley to the water pump dry flange. This vehicle has a hydraulic tensioner. We'll remove the pulley bearing cover to expose the pulley mounting bolt. Mechanical tensioners have a separate 17 millimeter hex on the tensioner arm. This is used to detension the pulley. For this hydraulic tensioner, use an Allen or Torx bit as applicable and a breaker bar to detension the pulley. We'll now remove the drive belt by releasing the tension on the tensioner pulley. Pull the belt off the water pump pulley and set it aside. We can now remove the pulley bolts. If the pulley is stuck to the water pump flange, gently tap the mounting face with a hammer. Note that this vehicle already has the upgraded metal pulley installed as the original plastic one was found to be broken when the water pump was last replaced. To remove the water pump, we'll use the two 6mm bolts from the water pump removal kit threaded into these two holes in the water pump base. Thread the bolts into the holes. Remove the four 10 millimeter hex nuts that secure the pump to the timing cover. Use a 10 millimeter socket to thread in the two removal bolts. 
Run each bolt in evenly so the pump is evenly pressed out of the timing cover. Once the pump is free of the cover, pull it fully out. Clean up the O-ring sealing area and the mounting face. Coat the O-ring with a bit of coolant. Insert the pump into the timing cover housing. Push the pump in so that the four nuts can be started onto the studs. Tighten the nuts in a sequential manner so that the pump is evenly pulled into the housing. Notice that the mounting holes for the pulley are not fully symmetrical. Line up the holes on the flange with the holes in the pulley. Insert and thread in the mounting bolts. We can now reinstall the drive belt. Note that this vehicle has had the drive belts and pulleys recently replaced. If they had not been, we would recommend replacing the two belts and the idler and tensioner pulleys at this time. Click the link shown on the screen to go to our serpentine belt and pulley replacement DIY video. Use the Allen or Torx bit tool to detension the tensioner pulley and route the belt over the water pump and tensioner pulley. Assure that the belt is properly set on the other pulleys and release the tensioner pulley against the belt. Replace the plastic bearing cap. Tighten the four water pump pulley securing bolts. Clean up the thermostat mounting areas. Install the new thermostat using the three 10 millimeter hex head bolts. Install the lifting eye bracket. Install the 13 millimeter hex bolt through the bracket and the thermostat. Install the 11 millimeter hex nut. Tighten the three 10 millimeter and one 13 millimeter hex bolts.
finish with the 11 millimeter hex nut. Install the Vano Spanjo fitting with one sealing washer on each side of the fitting and the bolt running through the washers and the fitting. Thread in and tighten the banjo bolt. Install the thermostat harness plug. Install the upper hose to the thermostat nipple. Assure that the hose end is fully installed over the nipple. Press the locking clip into place. Install the lower hose in the same manner as the upper hose. Install the fan shroud assembly, be it the electric fan assembly shown here or the mechanical engine fan and shroud. Note the lower alignment tabs on the shroud. Be sure that these align with the sockets on the radiator side tanks as the fan is slid down into place. Install the securing rivet and screw. Install the rivet base, then insert the center pin and push to secure it. Install the torque screw and tighten. Connect the fan connector plug as well as the air quality sensor plug. We can now refill and bleed the cooling system. We'll use the BMW coolant mixed 50% with distilled water. The distilled water helps to prevent electrolytic corrosion by removing the minerals from the water. Finally, we'll use the spill-free funnel to fill the system without making a mess. Insert the proper adapter from the spill-free funnel kit and secure it with the plastic screw-on cap. Insert the funnel into the adapter. Note the funnel plug that allows us to remove the funnel even if it is still filled with coolant. Begin filling the system with the coolant and water mixture. We previously noted that we'd removed over one gallon of coolant when we drained the system. So we're just going to pour this whole first gallon into the system. Open the bleeder screw to allow the air to escape from the system as the coolant flows in. Continue adding coolant until the system will not take any more. Start the engine and follow the bleeding procedure as shown in our Coolant Flush DIY video. Click the link on the screen to go there. In fact, you may wish to just take this opportunity to perform a complete coolant flush. 
Check out the video to see the complete procedure. Okay, now that you've seen this task on replacing the water pump on these BMW six-cylinder engines, remember that we do recommend replacement at 60 to 80,000 miles so you don't have a catastrophic failure and all of the extra expense and inconvenience involved with that. Now, if you've liked this video, hit your like button, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And remember, everything you've seen here is available in our online store at bavauto.com.